Hi everyone, this is Richard Carlton. I'm here today with Dave Henderson from RCC and two guests, very special guests from Productive Computing. We got Mark and we got Chris. Hi guys. Hey, how's it going? This is Mark from Productive. Hey, great. And we have Chris and the reason these guys are here is to discuss a very awesome product that they have created for the FileMaker platform that we've actually been using and it's it's pretty impressive and it's a good time to talk about it make a video about it because we've just finished deploying it with one of our customers so it, it was a good time to share the experience and we're talking about a biometric fingerprint 007 James Bond scannery thing so what is this thing when you guys want to when you guys want to tell us about this so uh, the biometric fingerprint reader is a plugin that fits into FileMaker Pro and will extend the ability to use a uh, digital persona URU uh, fingerprint reader to scan fingerprints and provide digital security for your databases. Wow, that's uh, quite the sentence there. So basically we're scanning fingerprints and I mean it's not made by Windows so this is a third-party company that makes these scanners. Who makes these uh, biometric scanners? Uh, the scanner manufacturer I believe is now known as Crossmatch. Uh, they were formerly digital persona. It's a security group that works with biometric technology. There's so a lot of readers in the market. Okay, so they make the hardware and you folks made the software that talks to FileMaker. Correct. Okay, so uh, walk us through kind of conceptually, how does this work at the 10,000 foot level? Okay, so for years and years, people have talked about security and with each new version of FileMaker, we get more and more security. But what we don't talk about is how do you secure like a workflow and process in an easy and guaranteed way. So uh, a lot of workflow and process is controlled by scripting in the FileMaker world. So how do you protect a script from running at a certain time without incorporating something like a password, something that could be shared, not very secure? So in comes the biometric reader. So if, just to throw an example out, let's say uh, you want to give manager access to a certain override function in your workflow. Uh, you've seen this all the time in, in the workplace. Uh, you've got the guy behind the counter, the girl behind the counter, they do something, they call the manager over, the manager comes over and swipes a card and then allows that cash register to override something. Same thing with this. For instance, let's say uh, you were doing something that needed a manager override. Manager could come over, scan his or her finger, allow that script to proceed, and then that's a good way of validating you know, different things through a scripting workflow. That was one of the reasons we created the biometric. Most customers use it for, for time clocks. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so I guess part of the point of the video to explain this to people is to kind of highlight what it is and what it's not. So it's not really designed as a front-end security component to really log in to the FileMaker security dialogue. So we have that dialogue at the beginning, you know, username or account and password, right? And so it doesn't really interface right there. It interfaces as part of a script. Correct. Yeah. In fact, it doesn't try to override any kind of built-in FileMaker security from a file opening standpoint, and it doesn't try to validate against privilege sets. It's a, another weapon in the tool chest for another type of security, which is, you know, like I consider workflow security or validation of who they are in the middle of a process, like time cards and timekeeping. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. You know, it's, it's been a big conversation point in the FileMaker community. In fact, I had an open bet with some people to try to hack through some security. And of course, some smart people in the FileMaker community broke through some uh, some security that we had created. We were just you know playing with this. Uh, at the time, it was a two-factor authentication. And what it is is that if you build security, your own security with scripts, you got to be very careful to build it in a very robust fashion. So it's not easy to kind of you know get around it per se. But this is a tool that we can add to that if you're writing kind of your own security or what we call workflow security, which I really like that term. I think that's a great term. This really speeds things along. So for people to get a little bit of a view of this, we're going to do just a very basic demo of this and talk about, you know, kind of the practical application. So I guess one of the first things we have to do is teach the biometric unit that there are certain fingerprints that it needs to accept, right? Yes, that's basically what the demo is going to demonstrate. You can enroll any from one to ten fingerprints, and I'll just start the demo here. It's easier to demonstrate than it is to talk about. So we'll enroll a user, and I'll just identify myself. OK. And this is the enrollment dialog. Each of the fingers is indexed. So I'm just going to pick my left index finger, select that one. And I'm going to tap it on the reader 
four times, and it's doing it four times for the purposes of accuracy. And it's done, and I can close it. And so I've been added. And so when I want to identify a user, I hit identify. And if I put the same finger that I enrolled, the system will tell you who I am. Following user has been identified Dave. If I try the same thing and try a finger I did not enroll, which means the system doesn't have a basis to identify me, it says no match is found. So this is pretty cool. So this is a scripted process. So Chris, help us understand the kind of the mechanics here of this a little bit. So Chris is the developer, the actual guy who wrote this, I guess, plugin, right, Chris? So congratulations on some really awesome work. Let's say a typical work group solution, which is by far what most people are going to have that are in business. And so it's running on a FileMaker server, but this is a plugin and a piece of hardware that really runs on FileMaker Pro. And so we put the plugin on the Pro client, which at this point is a Windows client. So that device has to know what fingerprints it's allowed to identify, like some sort of library. It's like Dave just scanned himself and he added himself, I guess, to the library. Do you call it an index? Is that what we call that? Uh, right. So the the library was basically the, the, the store, the repository of all these fingerprints. When the uh, the user installs the plugin or the technician installs the plugin on the Windows-based machine, um, they install both the plugin itself and a, a set of DLLs that our plugin uses. The DLL files that are in installed, uh, that's where the information for the for each user's fingerprints, all the biometric data, the verification, all the mechanism and the working guts are in that DLL file. So when they go through and they click to identify a user, that runs tells the DLL, I want to identify something. Let's take a look at my internal store and see who I have. Then they tap their fingerprint to the device. It then runs a check, verifies, and sees if the person exists or not, and reports success or fail. Okay. And that's it really in a nutshell. Okay, so Mechanically, where does that DLL file live? On the Pro, copy of Pro, is that where that's at? Uh, that actually lives right alongside the copy of Pro that they're using. Right, so say this solution was on the server, like a CRM, and we're gonna identify this one workstation, and we're identifying these people, it's saving this uh, library or catalog of authorized people to this DLL, is that being then pushed up to FileMaker server, or does it always, always, always live on FileMaker Pro right there? It always lives right next to FileMaker Pro on the user's machine. It does not send any data back to the server unless it goes through the solution itself. It keeps it local so that it's nice and fast. Okay, so let's talk about we have multiple store locations, and we scan person at location A, and then they go to location B, but they, you know, the, the theoretically in their mind, it's one big solution, therefore their fingerprint should follow them, right? So. How do we handle that situation? Well, we have a process involved with the plugin uh, for uploading fingerprints that basically takes the data that we store in FileMaker that associates the user's ID, for example, Dave, um, the finger index that they scanned. In this case, I believe it was uh, your left index, so index 7, uh, and then the biometric data that was created when they enrolled. And it takes all that and flashes it onto the DLL on the second uh, store B's machine. So say we're on machine A and they scan themselves in the catalog. So there is a, a command that we can call with a plugin to push that data into the FileMaker solution at the server, you know, the CRM, we can store, store it somewhere, maybe in the staff uh, table or something mm -hmm. like that. So then there would be a plugin command at the station B level that would allow us to, you know, grab all the staff, right, and load them locally onto the DLL on that workstation B. Correct. Okay. So the practical application, what we've talked about so far is time cards or time clocks, which makes a lot of sense. In the case of what we did recently, we rolled this out with a fast food chain, probably one of the biggest in the world, and they are using it in an HR capacity. So Dave, you were explaining to me that the enrollment process of the onboarding of new staff occurs at one office location for this business. And so then those, that library is kind of created there, but then you're pushing it up to the FileMaker server and the solution. Then the various other locations of this fast food chain, they actually download that so they can actually access that data on their local scanner, correct? That is correct. The only caveat is I have no way of knowing how many people are going to be enrolled in the system. And I have no, obviously no control over 
the quality of the broadband they have. So I scripted it in such a way that each location looks for only the fingerprints of the employees assigned to that location to download for the plugin. Yeah, this got into a situation where we we didn't want to, with a bad internet connection, try to downloading fresh snapshots of the catalog information. And so what we did is we ended up kind of caching it on a on a local file that makes it somewhat faster for us. So yeah, obviously in a single workstation solution, that's fine. But then when you're sharing this data, I mean, how, hey, Chris, how big is this data on a per fingerprint basis? I mean, how much data are we talking about? Uh, you know, I'm not 100% certain on the actual size of the fingerprint data. Uh, I believe that it is less than a kilobyte per fingerprint. Right. So that makes sense. When we talked about this with our solution, doing a demo for one person is one thing, but then if you wanted to have it upload 80 or 100 or 200 users, right, then suddenly, you know, 200 users with the fingerprint data could be, you know, large enough that you might actually notice it on a very poor connection. So the caveat is, is that when we do the fingerprint scan, the fingerprints already have to reside, all the allowable fingerprints have to reside in the local DLL. So we have to kind of think about that as we're building the solution. And then of course we need to buy the hardware. Now, do you folks sell the hardware? Because the unit that we have has a keyboard and the fingerprint unit is on the left side. It's like integrated right into the, into the plastic. It's really cool. So we sell the URU units to customers in the US, um, but this particular unit is readily available on Amazon. So it's basically hardware we could pick up on Amazon or we can buy it from you. But then the plugin and the underlying connectivity to really connect that hardware to FileMaker on Windows, we get from you. What kind of pricing are we looking at conceptually here for someone to add this to their project? Yeah, so it's a $199.95 per user. And we don't have multiple user pricing. Typically what happens is you'll have one reader for the enroll. Um, you might have one reader to do the validate at a single workstation. So the quantity in, in actual numbers is fairly low. But if you want to um, you know, go higher than four or five users, you know, call us and we'll probably make you a deal. Right. Yeah, I know we ran into the kind of some of that stuff with this uh, customer because they had quite a few locations that they were uh, uh, rolling this out to. So this is very cool. Now, this is a Windows-only solution, but I have been told that uh, a Mac version might be possible, but uh, someone would probably have to uh, underwrite the development costs for that part. <laughs> What typically happens with devices like these is they provide an API or an SDK, and typically the SDK is Windows only based on you know how the market works. But um, sometimes you'll get a cross-platform SDK that we can take advantage of and make a Mac and Windows product. But you have to balance the kind of hardware you're using. I mean, this hardware has been tried and true. It's used all over the world. So we went with a solid piece of hardware knowing that it was going to be Windows only. So whenever you bridge that gap of bringing a Mac thing to the marketplace, you got to balance that with, okay, who's the hardware vendor? Is this going to be a reliable unit? What's the accuracy and all that? So that's kind of the game you play. So once again, this is the Biometric Fingerprint Reader plugin from Productive Computing. These are some of the top FileMaker developers in the Southern California area. Very similar conceptually to RCC in terms of size and scope and capabilities. So for those of you who understand who we are, I only promote other products and companies that we have a high degree of confidence in. Productive has been around for a long time. It's run by what I refer to lovingly as the evil twins, um, but you guys are not twins, you're just brothers, right? Brothers three and a half years apart. Yeah, that's funny because if you meet them at DEF CON or something, they look nearly like identical twins, which is quite funny. But anyway, awesome guys, and they run a great team of FileMaker developers. They also have vertical market solutions, uh, like you see here with the biometric fingerprint. But you guys do some other uh, products as well. What else do you do? Correct. We have plugins that talk to QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online, Outlook, Exchange, both server side. We have PDF plugins, file plugins, change printer plugins. We can talk to the full suite of Apple products with address book manipulator, uh, calendar, you know, Mac calendar and all kinds of things on the plugin side. And of course, we have solutions a lot like RCC. Uh, we have a, like a CRM, Core 4 and 4, 5. And you're right, we do have some vertical market solutions and we support a lot of vertical market solutions uh, through our hosting services as well. Cool. Well, once again, everyone, the highest recommendation on the biometric uh, fingerprint product. And we've used their other products as well. So once again, check out Mark and Chris and the other folks at uh, Productive Computing 
at www.productivecomputing.com. And we'll catch everyone in the next video. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, everybody.